If you have your Bibles, I ask you to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 22. The title of this message is, What Color Are You? And in this message that I'm going to share with you, I want you to follow and pay attention. Uh, I, I'm not one of those preachers that, that, you know, and I tell you all the time, I don't believe flipping verse, verse, verse. But this morning, we're going to have some different verses. I'm not going to ask you to turn there. We'll have them on the screen. But this is our key verse that we're going to look at this morning, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 29. This is what it says. For you are my lamp, O Lord, and my God lightens my darkness. The first thing here, he has given us an illustration that God is our lamp. What happens with a lamp is nothing. When a lamp becomes useful is when it is plugged into the power and when there is a bulb in which is inserted into a lamp. Is a lamp still useful at that time? No. When the lamp is turned on is when it becomes useful. Check out what happens in this verse. He doesn't just continue saying that he's my lamp and a lamp is useless without being plugged into the power, without having a bulb in it, and it must be turned on. And check out what it says, oh my Lord, oh Lord, my God lightens my darkness. For him to lighten the darkness, it has been plugged into the power, it has been turned on, there has been a bulb placed in it, and now there is light in the darkness. The lamp is useful. I think crazy and I think different. I know y'all all know I've lost my mind. And this morning you're going to say, he's gone. And y'all just go ahead and probably need to form a committee after this morning because he's gone. But I'm going to ask you to follow along with me as we look at this illustration this morning. Now the lights are fixing to be turned off. I know you may not be able to see your Bibles, but as I said, there will be verses on there. If you want to jot down those addresses, you can. If you want to just read them and want to find out later, look on YouTube. Go to our Facebook page. You will see the sermon. You can get them jotted down then. But for this to truly make sense, I'm going to ask them to turn the lights of the sanctuary off right now. And so as they turn them off, the question to this title is, what color are you? Now, you notice that there are five lamps that's standing here in front of me. The very first lamp is that. It is a black light. And what one of the things that happens here with our black light is there is a little bit of light there, but it is really not affecting you in the back. It's not even really affecting you in the middle and not really affecting any of you up close front. But here's what happens. When we are in the darkness, we are in the sin of this world. Now, there are people that are lost as last year's Easter egg, but they do some good things. They do good deeds, and they kind of show a little bit of light. They kind of show that they know Christ. They kind of do these good acts. And guess what happens? Such as a black light, it produces a little bit of light. But in case you notice there, the black light really doesn't affect our lives, doesn't improve our lives, and really doesn't help us a whole lot. That's what that world out there without Jesus looks like. It's in the dark. And the question this morning is, is this you? Are you without Christ? If you this today, this morning... Do not know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. This is you. And I pray that before you leave this place, that you would no longer be this. The next light that we have here is a red light. And as you notice that red light, it represents the blood of Christ. It represents the Christ that died on the cross for your sins and my sins. The blood in which He poured out and washed away our sins. But what happens with this red light is it gives an illumination that transcends us, that is out in front of us, that people don't see us, but they see Christ. They see that blood that has been washed over us because they no longer see us. 
The thing is, is if you're just that black light, this is where you're going to stay. Until you come to an understanding of what Jesus Christ did for you. If you do know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have been washed in the blood, you have become this red light. The only way to allow these next three lights to even be a part of your life, you first have to become the red light. And if you're over there as the black light, these other lights sure don't mean nothing to you. The red light doesn't even mean nothing to you if you do not know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And as you notice those scriptures, as they roll up, you can, I'm trying to emphasize these scriptures as the points I'm trying to share with you. I'm trying to show you that these points are backed up biblically. These aren't just my words. Now, question. Have you been washed in the blood? If you say yes, then these next lights become you. Now, some of you know about these lamps that you can turn multiple times. And as you turn them, they become bright. This right here, this bulb, at this setting right there is 30 watts of light. Do you realize that for the light to come on, for the light to be used effective, you have the choice. You have the free will, first off, to even turn the lamp on. But then, past the free will of choosing to turn the lamp on, you have the choice of how bright you want your light to shine. We have a church full of people that have been washed in the blood. Some of them don't even turn that lamp on. And for the ones that do, they barely turn it on. And if you notice that scripture right there in Psalms, it says, Lord is my light of what? My salvation. You see, that's that setting, 30. Only thing we kind of shine around is is we let people know we've been saved. Oh, praise the Lord. We've been saved. We've been set free. And that's about as far as the gospel goes out of us. Somebody says, do you know Jesus? Oh, yeah, I know Jesus. Have you been saved? Oh, yes, I was saved at so-and-so revival. I was saved at so-and-so time. I was, or I don't know, but I just know I've been saved. And that's about as bright as you and I get for some people. And you know what? That's a good thing. But Jesus doesn't want us to stop there. The next setting that happens here is 70 watts. That 70 watt setting, as you look at that verse, I want you to notice. It talks about, for you have delivered my soul from death. We've, we've went past that, yes, Lord, I'm saved. But now we're talking about how we're excited that we know we're not going to hell. And, and then my feet from failing, that, that I'm walking in such a way that, that I'm trying to stay away from sin, that I'm not trying to mess up. And, and we're trying to have the walk. And, and, but we only allow our light to shine that far. But you and I have a choice that is that far as we're going to flip the switch. And then we had the setting 100 watts. That 100 watts is if you notice right there in 1 John 1, 7, it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, do you realize that when we set that setting on the highest setting possible, you and I, we are walking in such a way that we become like Christ and we are walking in the light the same as Christ. And it's just not in words, but it's in actions. You say, how's it in action? Look at that verse. It talks about how we treat other people. You see that? It, we have fellowship with who? One another. Not just with ourselves. Not with just our puppy dog and kitty cat. Here's the thing. We have fellowship with one another. If we become like Christ, we're able to get along with one another. And, and then you notice right there, he's talking about that blood, that red light that has cleansed away your sins. That you're walking in such a way, you're walking the way Jesus wants you to walk. And, and you're having fellowship with one another. And you're reflecting that red light all at the same time. It is all happening right there in that one verse. What color are you? 
If you have become that hundred watt of light, you become this. The green light. Now, we, we know when you pass by someone's house in the evening or at night, and you've seen the green light outside, it represents that you know you're honoring the soldiers and, and, and their work and their service to our country. But this green light this morning is representing much more. It is representing that you and I become a good soldier for who? Jesus Christ. We share in his suffering. Do you realize that if we are to walk like Christ, it is not going to be easy? We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be tried in so many ways. Satan is going to hit us on so many sides and so many fronts, just as a soldier sometimes becomes bombarded by taking on fire from the front, the back, the sides. But they get down in their foxholes. And they fight until they are able to come out. What kind of soldier do you look like? Have you become that soldier that you're sharing in the suffering of Christ? Are you able to shine that red light? Are you able to shine that hundred watt light? Are you able to shine that green light all at the same time? Because that is what God desires from you and he desires it from me. That we don't just allow him to become our lamp and just kind of light up our path. That we just, not about, oh, praise God, we're saved. But we take it all the way for his glory and for his honor. But then, a sad moment in Christian life. That sad moment is when we have those people They've talked the talk. They've made the proclaims. But they don't walk the walk. And that's the yellow back Christians. They're a bunch of yellers. All you see is the back of their coat as they're running away because they're scaredy cats. Then to stand up and be the soldiers in whom God wants them to be. And the sad thing is, our churches are full of those people in our pews on Sunday mornings. You look at that verse. It talks about how we're not to be equally yoked with unbelievers. How we allow the unbelievers to affect our relationship and our walk with God. Then it says, for what patterns of righteousness and lawlessness. Talking about how their actions, their things, and how the so-called Christians are looking like the world. And how their likeness is their light. How they're having fellowship with the darkness. And their light is pretty much not even being shown. They just look like the world. A bunch of hypocrites. Who are you? What color are you? If you're here this morning, you say, Wes, I'm yellow. I'm just a wimpy, pew-warming, Bible-carrying Christian. I'm just a yellow back. Well, here's the thing. You have a choice to do something about it. You have a choice. You have a God that loves you. That I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad you have cursed Him. You've rejected Him. Because I want you to remember a moment in time some of the closest people that walked with Jesus, ate with Jesus, slept right beside Jesus, they scattered and run. The one individual in whom cursed him three different times and denied him three different times became the person who he said that he is going to build his church upon. Do you realize that if you are willing to repent, say, God, I've looked too much like the world, I've just went through the motions. I no longer want to be yellow. I want to be green. I want to be a hundred whites. I want to be red. Here's the thing. That same Jesus that forgave Peter 
will forgive you. But the thing is, is you have to ask God to forgive you. Forgive, ask Him to forgive you for those actions and those sins. But check this out. True repentance isn't five minutes later going back to it. True repentance is no longer allowing that to be a part of your life. Do you notice that that yellow light does more damage to the Christian and to God than any of these other lights? Do you realize that this black light does a lot less harm to the cause of Christ than that yellow one? That yellow one does so much more than this black. Here's the thing. You and I have a choice of what we're going to do with our lights. Turn that on, Brad. The thing is, this morning, you have a choice. What light are you going to be? You have no excuse because you've seen it. You've seen the Scriptures. And you've seen God's Word. Our key verse this morning was there in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 29. And it talked about the, how God is our lamp. But Him just being our lamp is not what it's about. It's about allowing Him to set that bulb inside of you and allow Him to connect you to the power which is Him and allow Him to light your path into the dark world. And not allow that dark world to affect your light for Him. I can't do it for you. I'm going to be honest with you. I love you. I love this place. And I'm going to be honest, it's not easy. But I do. And I'm going to tell you, I've lost a lot of sleep worrying about a lot of you. But I can't do anything about it. You're held accountable for your actions. I'm held accountable for mine. Only God can do it between you and Him. And only God can do it between me and Him. The choice is yours. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you.